Salutations, players. It is I, Marius von Befufeldink, emissary to his lord, the Emperor, and today we will be showing you how to start painting your Nordlin colour scheme for your state troopers, crossbowmen, great swords, and what have you. Now, before we get started, I thought I should bring in his lord, the Emperor, Karl Franz, to read some fluffy goings on from the uniforms and heraldry book for the Empire. Right, meow. Yeah. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you your emperor and mine, Karl Franz. Yeah, what is up? What is up, my people? It is I, the emperor, Karl Franz. And I will be reading you from the Nordland entry in the Uniforms and Heraldry book. The province of Nordland is famous for its navy and its heavily tolled coastal roads which provide safe passage for rich merchants traveling to Marienburg. Many sea fortresses and watchtowers line the coast as raiders from across the Sea of Claus are all too common. The state troops of Nordland, including the Nordland mariners, wear distinctive blue and yellow uniforms. The provincial banner bears a depiction of a sea eagle clutching a shield with the galley icon. The symbol is used as part of the coat, the coat of arms by the elector count Theodoric Gausser. He's a good man. We always get together and play polo with our demi griffins. We call it demi griffin polo. Traditionally, the Elector Count of Nordland is also the Prince of Marienburg, and this has been a point of contention since that city seceded from my empire, which I am not so very happy about. Other off-seen emblems in Nordland include the Imperial Cross, various ship anchor or fish designs, and the five-pointed crown of the Sea God Manan. So, there you are, players. I hope you enjoy this tutorial, and now without further ado, I hand it over to the tiny and wimpy and not at all sexy or muscular Vobas Tay to continue this painting tutorial. Okay, so here we got our swordsman ready for painting. A little bit of a different light angle there so I can see my computer screen. Oh no, random paint! Alright, let's get started. I always like to start with the face and the hands. So let's go with Talarn Flesh. As always, we are using just a little bit of Talarn Flesh and putting it onto our wet palette so that the paint doesn't become too thick. And when we paint it on, we're not just slapping it on, but I'm going in small, short strokes. And this is true with painting any part of the model, but especially with skin, which is supposed to be, you know, overall smooth and not have too much lumps and and whatever, because unless unless that's like an artistic painter's choice that you want your skin to be craggy and lumpy, but even then, you just, you know, I don't know. It just looks better to the person who's looking at your your figures. Okay, now we're going to start painting on his regimental colors. Let's do quarters. We haven't done quarters in a long time. So the three paints we're going to be using for the blue, as stated in the White Dwarf that came out for May. Calador Sky, Teclas Blue, and Lothern Blue. We're going to knock all three of those out. So starting with Calador Sky, which is the base color. Um, 
start from the top. He's, this guy's wearing. This guy happens to be wearing a jerkin, so we will paint that in yellow or uh, leather. I mean. You can see because with each each day trooper, you can pretty much get to the center of his uniform under the jerkin. So let's go to like. <clears throat> I like the fluff for the Nordlanders. Um, they're the city-state that Marienburg, the biggest seaport in the world, is kind of like located in. But Marienburg, in the history, used their financial prowess, paid off one of the previous empires to uh, secede from the empire. So Marienburg is not legally an empire, but uh, an imperial state but the elector count of Nordland still counts it as being, <laughs> and uh, he still counts himself as like the, the duke or the baron of Nordland or something, but they're like, hey, if you come back here, we're gonna throw you in the, throw you in the pier because you're not welcome here. So it's funny, it's a cool little bit of fluff. On the opposite side, we are going to paint Start going with the yellows, and the yellows are good old Averland Sunset, Ariel Yellow, and Flash Gets Yellow. So, starting with the base color, Averland Sunset. To me, I also think that blue and yellow is just a really generally striking color scheme. You know? It looks cool on the table. If you've got, you know, a horde of 40 or 50 of these guys. on Averland Sunset it seems to have uh, seems to have good coverage but it's weird because some parts it'll some places on the model it'll it'll clump and other places it'll streak and you've got to just have good brush control you can't just like slap it on and then go to the next part you've got to kind of spread the paint around with your brush tip okay and um, you know, all these models are going to be different because all the State Trooper models are different. You know what I mean? So some of these have slashes in their sleeves, some of them don't. Some of them have um, different kinds of, of torsos and uniform designs. So just kind of be creative and stick to the main two colors. And if you don't like doing the quartering, like I do, then uh, by all means go halvesies. Do like the pants in one color, the trousers in one color, and uh, uh, the jerkin, or the, the uniform at the top, the shirt in a different color. Where's the focus? Where's the focus, Igor? There it is. And last but not least, let's get the inside part that's under the breastplate and the jerkin. The good thing about painting from underneath towards the top is that you can paint on top of the strap here on the the breastplate and 
um, you can get your yellow paint on it and it's okay because we're gonna paint on top of it we're gonna cover it up as we paint paint up with our colors okay so at this point you guys should look like this Okay, so now we're going to do base coats for the rest of the model, and for metal, we're going to be using chainmail. I love chainmail. I think, um, you know, it's it's nice for for Empire troopers because it's nice and bright, and uh, it's not as it's not as garishly bright like um, Mitho Silver is, but it's not dark and dirty like old gun metal so for you know for Empire for Bretonians I think a good base coat is chainmail for metal I've got a good idea for the shield design um, which we'll leave we'll leave empty for now I'm just painting the sword and now we're gonna get the um, breastplate so it's gonna be a weird, funky little angle. What do you know about that? Okay, and then he's got a little dagger under here. So if you want to skip ahead to where I'm actually highlighting the the colors, then that's probably best. If you're if you're doing your own state trooper and it doesn't look like mine, then would you go ahead and do that? Uh, if you're a hardcore war boss Tay fan, do you love blurry out of focus shots? of me just painting on base coats, then by all means, stay! <laughs> For plumage, <clears throat> we're gonna give this guy a red plume, as red will stand out nicely, I think. Yeah, Actually, no, red would be Marion Bird color, so let's give this guy a green plume, so he matches the rest of his army. We use Dark Angel's green for the feather as a base coat. Nice, rich, dark emerald. So he should look something like that at this moment. So now let's get to painting the rest of him. <coughs> And for this, I'm going to be using mostly older colors as well. For example, Camry Brown, we're going to be using to paint um, the back of, or uh, to paint his boots. I find uh, Calton Brown and Camry Brown just, you know, totally interchangeable, so if you'd rather have darker leather boots, then uh, you can use that. <coughs> Calton Brown is good for that. These models are starting to show their age, but really are so packed with detail. You know, you've got the guys with no shoes on, you've got the hourglass guys, just all these bodies are different, and when you swap their heads out and add on little extra details, it really just adds to it. <clears throat> I 
today we're also going to be using Camry Brown for any straps. And by straps, I do not mean 9mm pistols, I mean actual straps. Hmm. Looks like this guy's armor is... Pretty, you know what we can do? We can give this guy a belt. Belt. And uh, we can also use this color for the sheath of his dagger. Which, if you ask me, seems to be dangerously positioned Phone call. Okay, so uh, let's start to paint some opposing colors, uh, contrasting colors. I'm gonna take our Calador Sky and paint in the slashes on the yellow side, uh, the, the yellow sleeve, <coughs> rather, as it were. as well as the, this looks like it's supposed to be a K for Carl Franz. Ah, that's me! But, yeah, I don't know what that is. What if I'm even painting it right? Ah, you know what, that's all right. No idea what that's supposed to be, but looks like it's supposed to be a K. So I'm gonna assume it's a K. <laughs> and we're also gonna take um, our yellow Averland Sunset and paint in the little cloth that's hanging from the left leg. So yeah, I mean yours is gonna be different than mine, most likely, nine out of ten times. Your state trooper isn't gonna have these specific details, but the thing that's going to make your model interesting and stand out and make each of your models have, you know, their own kind of like story and flavor is that you find ways to take this motif and carry it across the opposing colors and the, um, and the detail for each of these. Looks like this might a little bit overboard, but um, we haven't really painted any of the other, any of the other really big colors on it, so that's okay. Yeah, we've only been mostly painting the blue and the yellow, so now let's get on to some of the other bits. For the back of the jerkin, we're going to use old school Calvin Brown. I almost feel like I'm using all these old paints just to get, get rid of them, get through them, you know? This is also going to be going um, on these straps over the shoulders. And again, if your guy doesn't have this, never mind, just keep on going. So what kind of army would you use Nordlanders to represent? If you want a force that, in your mind, um, is really well trained with the navy and fights a lot on the ocean, if you think you want to do some like really thematic um, <coughs> battles on, like maybe do a campaign where your guys, your army is taking part on the ocean, or if uh, you know you have a, an army based in Marienburg uses that beautiful but obscenely priced landship on Forge World 
that I hope to get one day, but realistically probably never will just because it's so flippin' much. Sponsor! If you want to sponsor a War Boss Tay video and buy me a land ship from Fort World, please donate. But um, no, the great thing about Marienburg is that they use the same colors. All they do is they add red, so blue, yellow, and red. And um, that's also a great color scheme as well. Uh, speaking of red, now let's keep the red out. We're gonna use a little bit more Dark Angels Green, the same color of the feather, and we're gonna paint this little tassel on the belt back here. I just didn't want to paint any more blue or yellow. Okay. In the boot. <clears throat> Alright, what do we need to do now? We need to... Oh, paint these, um... I'm gonna make them like parchment, like purity seals for 40k. Then up stone. Actually, let's not use Denip Stone for this one. Let's use, um, we might as well start getting used to this new substitute Denip Stone, Rackard Flesh. Let's save our Denip Stone for the good stuff, like bones <laughs> and models that have, like, bone pieces on them. That's a sad thing. You know what they should have done when they were turning over their paint range? They should have made like a contest or something where if you win the contest you get to choose which paint color they keep from the old range. And I know that's not possible because of um, the, uh, I guess the copyright agreements and the contracts for, for their paints. But, um, it's just sad that they had to get rid of all of their paints and all of their um, formulas for them. So when I'm writing on this parchment, on this purity seal on his chest, I like to think about like, you know, what, what the actual writing is. It makes you, it'll keep you motivated, you know, to paint these things because otherwise you're just sitting at your table and you're like, Oh man, there's another different color that I have to paint on my guy. What a flippin' drag. But when you think of details like that, then it'll, it'll help pass the time and motivate you to get this stuff done. So I'm going to say that he's this guy is carrying around with him a list of the names of all the fellow uh, crewmen that were on a ship that he was stationed on as a boy. You know, it's like a it's like a cabin boy or whatever. It's like a little boy gopher. And um, the ship went down. Maybe ooh, maybe it was attacked by dark elf raiders because Nordland is right on the coast of the Sea of Claws, so they get raided all the time by um, dark elf corsairs. That's pretty awesome, pretty fluffy. Okay, uh, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna paint on the gold. Any gold detailing is gonna be done with the new hotness in gold, which is these base metallics, Balthazar gold for, for gold. And I call it the new hotness because it really is no more painting on a, a foundation color like Calvin Brown and then slapping this on, you really can just paint paint the color straight out of the pot and then you have a uh, you have a very good base base color for using your highlight metallics like gold whereas before if you tried to paint shining gold straight onto a primer model or even a model that had you know some paint on it already the shining gold was just always too thin for for my taste This is really, really great. I'm gonna be similar with 
I'm gonna be uh, consistent, I mean, and I'm gonna paint the little dagger by his by his cod piece so that the hilt is just like the hilt of the sword he's using. I painted this Balthazar gold. Okay, so there's that. Last thing to do is paint his, um, these things right there where his arm is. So I'm gonna flip open my uniforms and heraldry book, take a look at what they've done for these pieces by the wrist. Looks like they go with alternate colors or like the accent color, like this red or white or just the same color. Hmm. So, or we could go like this guy up here. He's got black. Now you can't see it too much, but kind of like that black. <clears throat> that would work even better if you had black boots. Okay, so <clears throat> in the end I decided to go with the, the same blue and the yellow that their uniform sleeve is. And, um, yeah, so, so that's it for that. Let's get on with the paint, uh, painting the shield. For the shield, I've decided I'm gonna make a device against a black background, so I'm gonna go with Chaos Black. I was thinking, you know, there's so many great, great motifs for, for the shield work. But um, but when I was looking at the uniform, there's the uniform is mainly just this blue and yellow, and when that is also the color of your shield, that's hard. The shield won't stand out as much. I kind of want the shield to stand out on its own. And then I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll, we'll make a red shield. The red will will stand out really nicely. Um, But with the red shield, the trouble that you have is that it starts to make it look like a Marienburg unit. And I want to be very specific that this is a Nordland unit and not a Marienburg unit, because I'm planning on doing a Marienburg color scheme later. So I want to save save this for that. And also when you use Chaos Black too, the good thing is that you get to paint behind the shield Chaos Black so that you can clean up any mistakes that you might have made while um, doing the rest of your base coats. Which you should do anyway. You should always clean up any of the backs. Okay, so while we're waiting for that, we can get onto the, the washes for this. And um, we're gonna use Nuln Oil for all of the metallics, the silver and the gold. I gotta put like tape or something on my table to mark where my wrists always need to end back up on. <laughs> seems like, you know, I can't, I'm always looking up and down at the screen and making sure that the model is focused because Igor's not doing his job. I'm oh, sorry, master. I just don't take much interest in all this empire nonsense. Ah. <laughs> Paint! Paint! There was paint in the lid and now it's on my hand and oh, oh games workshop. See, I oh man. Oh and it got in my book. Oh no. Uh, look what it did to my book! Paint streaks! No! These new lids are... I don't even remember what I was talking about. Oh my goodness. What a bummer. Eh, yeah, well, what are you gonna do? I just wait. <laughs> I'll just wait another eight years for them to redo their paint line again. Fix these pots. 
Um, yeah, so I'm also going to do this known oil on the boots as well to make them look nice and dirty. The new Devlin Mud, actually, Agrax Earthshade might look good on the boots, but I just want to see how the, the black works as well. The known oil, I mean. I felt uh, I felt the pain on my the paint on my fingers, and I was like, "No, no, really? This new paint pot couldn't possibly be leaking all over my finger when I just opened it." And yeah, apparently you can't you can't shake your pots anymore because if the if the paint gets up into the the lid. Bad news when you open it, I guess. So black on the leather jerkin itself. And the straps, any straps you've got. I'm always strapped. You gotta look out for yourself when you go into the clubs. Somebody noted that Lewis sounded like a an old timey <laughs> Wild West prospector. <laughs> and that's actually exactly what I'm going for with him. <laughs> Hee ho! <clears throat> okay, let's uh, go on to the, the, the blues now. I don't have the new blue shade, so we're gonna be using sermon blue for this but um, yeah Hey, thanks to all of you uh, Empire players out there, and anybody, any of my fans who actually sit through and watch these videos. Sorry they're so long. Um, I think if I rushed the job and tried to make it shorter by rushing the painting, I don't think it would come out as, as well. And yet at the same time, I don't want to make it so long and tedious that, you know, I lose all of my viewership. So, I'm trying to find the right balance, and uh, I think I'm where I am right now is pretty... It's pretty good, it's pretty pretty secure where I want it, the quality of my videos to be. Oh, that's non oil paint. I think after this guy, after this Nordland guy, I'm gonna go into the Chaos Marauder. That seems to be a, a cool one that people wanna, wanna see. <clears throat> um, that's my Cassandora Yellow. We're gonna go on to Cassandora Yellow next for the shades, because uh, I love how I showed you this in my in my Avalon video how Games Workshop made a shade for yellow. Make sure we can see it. It's like a really light orange color, but I think uh, it's a really good really good investment to anyone who paints a lot of yellow like Crimson Fists not Crimson Fists, uh, Imperial Fists, Marines anyone who uses a lot of yellow in their painting So yeah, thanks everybody for watching my videos. I can't believe I'm already up to 2,000 something subscribers. That's, that is really wild. Um, I'm gonna keep trying to make videos and doing, doing these crazy shenanigans. Uh, as long as people keep watching them, it motivates me to paint and, and get stuff on my own table done that I've got. Like these empire guys that have been sitting in my closet forever. Uh, not to mention all the new stuff like the, the griffins and whatnot. So thank you everybody for watching. 
sticking through it with me up till now. Okay, next we're going to use Ogre and Flesh. We have a little bit more time before the video runs out. We're just going to... This is the easiest part because Ogre and Flesh, all you're doing is the face and the hands. Face, hands, and if you want to do maybe a second Ogre and Flesh after the first one, uh, just to show how you know sunburnt and tan they are, then that's definitely an option. This guy's going to be totally different skin color wise from the um, from the the known or not the known but the Middenheim guy. We're going to use just a little bit more known oil now for uh, the parchment. It's the last thing we have to to uh, wash, and then we'll be done with this part of the video. So just get in under wherever you have parchment or or even. Um, if you have any skulls, a lot of these state troopers have skulls on them. Skulls of uh, past friends, former comrades, whatnot. Got a little too much, it's getting all over the place. It's a new thing I noticed with these new watches too, it's really easy to, uh, to over load your brush with wash and it spreads really well really gets into all the crevices and shadows which is good which is what you want but you just want to make sure you still have control over the brush okay so here's our guy we're gonna let it dry and then we'll come back in part two of the video where we're gonna do the highlighting and um, working the details for the shield. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next video.